This looks a bit weird, doesn't it? We've got a piano and then an Atari computer sat on top of it. What's all that about? Why would you have a computer on top of your piano? It makes word processing a little bit difficult. Well, this is the Yamaha U30 upright piano made in Japan and it contains the disc clavier system. You can see a little black box over here which allows you to record your performance and play it back through the same piano. Pretty nifty. Now, although this offers playback, it only offers very basic functions such as you can transpose the key or you can make the volume slightly louder or slightly softer and you can change the tempo. Now, you can also do all of those things and more on the Atari. Now, this Atari is running Cubase version 2 from 1989 also, so both of these machines are about to turn 30 years old. However, they both work perfectly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record something um, on the piano, playing it back from the computer afterwards. And here we go. So now I've recorded that, as you can see the hammers were moving, I was playing the keys, I was also using the sustain pedal. The sustain pedal also has a sensor, so when you press down the pedal it registers the sustain command on the Cubase, on the computer. The half blow pedal, which is the one that um, makes the keys, makes the hammers slightly close to the keys, also has a sensor, so that, that works when you play it back. Now, when you play back, there are two massive great solenoids that control those pedals. This, you need a lot of weight. You need to put the weight of your leg on that pedal to actually press it down. So there's a very powerful solenoid for playback purposes. Also, there are lots of solenoids for each hammer and key. There's a lot going on here. However, the data that this piano transmits is comparatively small when you consider that a modern keyboard that has lots of controls like cut off and resonance and other sort of fine controls aren't present on this. You've got a note on command, a note off command, and whatever the note is, so C3, which would be MIDI note 60, and the velocity between 0 and 127. So actually there's not a huge amount that it's having to transmit. It's the playback through the piano that's the really hard bit. Now each hammer uh, has a little sensor which moves inside a light beam which determines the velocity at which you've recorded. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's transmitting that data but by very different means from a modern keyboard with pads under each key. So I'm going to play this back to you now from the computer and you can hear what I've just recorded together with the sustain pedal moving up and down with the solenoid and all of the notes at their correct velocities or rather the velocities that I recorded them at. heavy on those. So I've got to go and find them on the computer and just dumb them down in velocity terms. You can do all this. The fine tuning that you can make to a performance is really quite incredible. Of course there is no substitute for the perfect take or the perfect performance by the musician but there are other things that the computer will enable 
that really, really do find themselves very you know, useful in a studio situation. So I'm just gonna find those loud Fs first. So it will, every time I click on a note there, it will give me the value of the note, uh, or rather it will play it back through the piano. That's a loud one. So now I've just dumbed down those two Fs, I'm going to play back through that and just check that I've got the right velocity. There we go. I mean, I know it's the tune, and I think too much, and maybe I could sort of split the difference with that so it just sits above those chords a little bit more easily. So I can do that as well. maybe I'll split the difference. I've just taken it down 20 levels in MIDI terms. Zero to one, two, seven. That's the range of the notes in terms of volumes. That's a little bit better. It's just that top F is just sitting above those chords. Now, I could decide that maybe I want the whole performance to be a little bit louder or a bit softer. Now, beware, if you make the performance too soft, if you took everything down by 20 points, for example, if you've got a note that you've played that was 18, that note won't be played back at all. So you've got to be quite careful with this. However, maybe I'm in the studio and I've got my pair of mics on my unique piano here, because it is. All these pianos are completely different. The way that they're tuned, the way that they sound in a room, the way they sound with a specific pair of microphones. It's much, much more specific and individual than maybe a uh, computer piano would be. So it's nice to have something like this. I'm going to take the whole thing. Let's just say I've got, um, I'm going to use another vocalist to sing this. I see trees of green red. Maybe it's that first note's a little bit low, or perhaps I've got, um, I don't know, I've got a girl singer who's going to come in and sing this. You can transpose the whole thing up. So we were in the key of F major. Now I'm going to take the whole thing up to G major. So now I've taken the whole thing, it takes a little while to get used to this old Atari mouse again, it's this clunky sort of thing, it's much different than the trackpad. But I've now moved everything to G major. Whereas before it was... you got the perfect recording take in a particular key and rather than have to go back and do it all again because of a, a different vocalist or maybe it sounds better with a you know if you've got a wind section or something and it just sounds a bit nicer in a particular in another key you can just shift it up or down on the computer and there you go so both of these machines are about to turn 30 years old and I hope you'll agree they it's really very, very powerful indeed. Now, the disc clavier is still being made. It's being made now with things like, well, modern things like USB connectivity, or you can play back files from the internet through your disc clavier piano. This particular one, when I bought it, it's actually, it's, it's not worn very much. It's, 
you know, it's, it's, it's had very little use. Partly, I think people who buy these maybe just want to have something nice that they can record and play back, or it might be good for, you know, somebody learning the piano. But it's, um, I hope you agree, it's a very, very useful asset in a studio situation to be able to have that control over a piece of cast iron and wood, which, let's face it, is the only way to play the piano. The guy that sold this to me, and he's the local Yamaha uh, supplier and the local piano tuner, is called Julian Phillips. Check him out online. He does the Boogie Woogie Festival in Sturmitz and Newton in Dorset every July. He supplies pianos. He'll take a piano to a venue and unload it from the trailer and put it in position. Um, he doesn't like electric pianos. He says everything he set plays on it doesn't sound very nice. And what well, he's got a point. This is a proper bit of kit, but with that extra little modern bit of that modern twist of the fantastic disc clavier system from Yamaha.